hello and welcome back to another video with the Feed My Sheep Foundation video channel. Uh, today's video will be a continuation of our Bible study in the book of Jeremiah. And we are in uh, Jeremiah chapter 17 for this video. Just keep in mind that as we go forward with the reading, the Bible study in Jeremiah, it is the majority of the conversation and the reading that we're going to be seeing is a conversation between God and Jeremiah. And it's always in reference to the house of Israel, uh, the children of Israel, or the house of Judah and their rebellion because they had, you know, they had uh, unfortunately slid into rebellion against God. And so therefore he was addressing their behavior by explaining to Jeremiah first and foremost how he felt about them and what he saw them doing and then also giving Jeremiah uh, the judgment for what he's going to do to them and he sent Jeremiah to tell them to forewarn them first okay because it's not like God doesn't thank God you know if he is getting ready to do something he like he said in his word he would make it known to his prophets first Okay, in a vision. Now, that vision doesn't always have to be in a night vision because these are day visions that Jeremiah has written about that he's had with the Heavenly Father and it, telling them, telling him what he, that he's getting ready to do to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. So we can see that uh, even though, again, he's not sleeping in these visions that he's having, but he is awoke. Okay. But God is speaking to him because a vision is any time God speaks of anything that is getting ready to come to pass. And he doesn't necessarily have to verbally speak it. He may give it to one in a dream. Like in a, uh, if a person is asleep and is given to the, that person in a dream state, or it may be given in just a vision of while the person may be awake walking down the street and the vision comes to them. The Lord give them that vision. That's how he will do that. And so, nevertheless, it's still the voice and the mind and the heart of God telling us what is getting ready to happen. So, uh, with these visions that Jeremiah is having, again, God is speaking to him one-on-one -on -one and telling him. He's talking to him about it. So, Jeremiah chapter 7, uh, let's go ahead and start with, The sin of Judah is written with a pen of iron and with the point of a diamond. It is graven upon the table of their heart and upon the horns of your altars. So we can see here that he says that their sin, the sin of Judah, because he's uh, addressing the house of Judah, their sin is written on the table of their heart, which means he can see it. It's open before him. And, you know, not like what uh, the saint is today. God can't see the sins of the saint unless the sin back uh, has a, a uh, backsliding and goes into defilement and rebellion. But other than that, if they're in alignment with God, then God can't see their sin. He can only see the blood covering of Christ Jesus, protecting them from the wrath of God, protecting them from the judgment of God. But here in this particular statement, he's telling Jeremiah to tell them or informing Jeremiah that he can see their sin, okay, which he says that quite often throughout this book. So going on, he says, while their children remembered their altars and their groves by the green trees upon the high hills, O my mountain in the field, I will give thy substance and all thy treasures to the spoil and thy high places for sin throughout all thy borders. And thou, even thyself, shall discontinue from thine heritage that I gave you, and I will cause you to serve thine enemies in the land which you know not. For we have, for you have kindled a fire in my anger, which shall burn forever. Okay, so they had kindled a fire. They had started a fire with God. Okay, which definitely means he was angry, because uh, because of their rebellion and their sin that they were doing in the mix of their rebellion. And he says, for this, in verse four, they're going to serve their enemies. Okay, he's going to place them in a position to serve their enemies. Then verse 5 says, thus says the Lord, curse be the man, because, because now he's getting ready to tell them what they have done and what they're doing and how he sees them in what they're doing, okay? Because again, 
verse, verse 4 tells us that uh, he's going to make them serve their enemies. Okay. But in verse 1, at the beginning of this chapter, God says that he sees their sin on the table of their heart. So he can see what they're doing, all of the sin that they're doing. So now when we go into verse 5, we see that thus says the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusts in man and makes flesh his arm, and whose heart departs from the Lord. So they have departed from the doctrine and the um, the uh, things that God has to say to them and in instructing them and in guiding them. Okay, so then therefore he says they are cursed. And that is why the things that he says he's going to do in verse 4 is going to happen to them. Because that's a part of the curse, being given over to serve your enemies. Okay, um, then verse 6, for he shall be like the heath in the desert and shall not see when good comes, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness and a salt land and not be inhibited. Okay, so in this, they're not going to even see the hand of God because, again, they have stepped over into rebellion. And that's the good hand because we know God's hand is the good hand. Well, he's telling them, saying right here that they're not going to be able to see when good comes. So therefore, God is the good that comes. So they're not going to understand or be able to recognize God's hand because, again, they stepped away from God's will. So therefore, they can't see or rectify whenever God is moving in their life, okay, unless they repent, okay, and then that places them back into alignment and then they will be able to see God's hand moving for them. But because they have stepped into rebellion to serve other gods, and in the process of serving those other gods, they begin to sin, and that sin is being seen by God. Therefore, that is what he's saying he's going to do, or that's what's going to happen to them, okay? So then verse 7 says, Blessed is the man that trusts in the Lord, and whose hope is the Lord, okay? For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters, that spreads out their roots by the river and shall not see when the heat comes. But her leaf shall be green and shall not be careful in the year of drought. Neither shall cease from yielding fruit, okay, a green leaf, okay. Now that's to the blessed one that has, uh, that listens to the Lord, trusts in the Lord. Because they have decided, again, we go back up to thinking about what Judah because that's who he's addressing in this chapter. They have decided to trust in themselves, okay? Because anytime an individual, you're either going to trust in God or you're going to trust in yourself. And when you begin to serve an idol, you've begun to trust in yourself. Because you, somewhere within your own being, you've decided that trusting in God isn't worth it, isn't, isn't you know, whatever you've decided. Within yourself, you've made that decision. So therefore... You decide to trust in idol, and that is trusting in man because you're trusting in yourself, okay? And so, therefore, he goes on to say that that particular person is cursed. And then uh, going on to verse 9, he says, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked, and who can know it? Nobody but God. Sometimes you don't even know you're going to do what you're going to do and say what you're going to say because, again, God is di that he's the director of the heart. And so, therefore, and only he really knows the heart of man. Okay, and I'm not saying all the time it's like that, but there are some times, I'm quite sure, that you can think of in your life when you thought, well, wow, I didn't know he was going to say that or do that or whatever. Okay, because, again, God knows the heart, and the heart can be des des deceitful. He tells us that above all things, desperately wicked. Verse 10, he says, I, I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doing. Because he can see in their heart and he sees what they're saying, okay? So what is the fruit of their doing? He's giving them over to their enemies because they've decided to serve the enemy anyway. And serving an idol, idols are in opposition to God and the other God that is on the face of the earth that, that can be uh, acknowledged as a God is in opposition to the one God who is the God over the heavens and the earth. Our one true living God, the Heavenly Father, Jesus Christ, the Son, the Savior of the holy, holy, holy heavens. Okay, any other God is in opposition to that God. No matter, no matter what kind of uh, pedestal an individual may put that God upon. Nevertheless, God has already spoken the God of heaven, the God of earth, the God of creation, the, the God of breath, the God of life. 
Okay, and he's told us this in his word. So um, going on, he goes on to say that as the patriarch, partridge sits on eggs and hatches them, hatches them not, so he that gets riches and not by right, not the right way, shall leave them in the midst of his days, and at his end he shall be a fool. Okay, because they begin to accumulate much riches from serving those idols. Okay, <laughs> and so therefore, uh, because and then the word also speaks of that as being um, what is the word I'm looking for? Oh Jesus, ill-gotten gain, ill-gotten gain. And I should have had that written so we can see that in the Bible. But next, whenever as the Holy Spirit leads and guides me to pull that up on here, I I will list it. But it's it's the Bible speaks of ill-gotten gain. So that's what they had gotten from serving their idol God. Verse 12 says, A glorious high throne from the beginning is the place of our sanctuary. O Lord, the hope of Israel, all that forsake you shall be ashamed, and they that depart from me shall be written in the earth, because they have forsaken the Lord, the fountain of the living waters. Heal me, O Lord. Now this is Jeremiah saying this. <clears throat> of course, he's saying, Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved, for thou art my praise. Jeremiah is saying these things because he doesn't want to get caught up in the same judgment that, you know, that he sees Judah is getting ready to be going through. He says, behold, they say unto me, where is the word of the Lord? Let it come now. As for me, I have not uh, hastened from being a pastor. And that's another position I wanted to make note of, of Jeremiah and also uh, fits into what you've quite often heard me say on this uh Feed My Sheep Foundation Ministry, how that an individual, once they've been birthed into the spirit, they, be, they can be a prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, uh, apostle. And this is just making note of, or anyway, the, the Heavenly Father chooses to use that individual once they have been birthed into the Holy Spirit, okay? So, and are part of the kingdom. And because in the Old Testament, God had certain people that he had placed his... Uh, spirit within to use to lead and to guide the children of israel because all of them didn't have it okay the uh house of the, each you know house of judah the house of the children of israel they didn't have it but the leaders that god chose to manifest himself through to explain things to them they had it and prophet jeremiah was one of course because again that's another one of his positions he was a prophet a pastor he was used as a watchman and as we continue to read on, we're going to see more of how God used him. But I want to wait till we actually come to it in the word of God before I actually bring it out. So going on, he says, as for me, I have not hastened from being a pastor to follow you. Neither have I desired the woeful day. For thou knows that which came out of my lips has right before me. Be not a terror to me. Thou art my hope in the day of evil. So this is what he's saying to, to God because he doesn't want to be in the mix of their judgment. Let them be confounded that persecute me, but let, let not me be confounded. Let them be dismayed, but let not me be dismayed. Bring upon them the day of evil and destroy them with double destruction. Because again, even when Jeremiah would go before them just to tell them what God was saying, they had a problem with Jeremiah the prophet. And he was only explaining to them what God was telling him to say. And at times they wanted to kill him. And we've read about one of those spe uh, specific times in one of the chapters. I think it was 15, maybe. One of the chapters. Let me see. I should have had that one noted too. But nevertheless, they it was at one point in time they desired to kill him because he was coming telling them what God was saying he was getting ready to do to them in reference to their behavior. So verse 19 says, thus says the Lord unto me, go and stand in the gate of the children of the people. This is what God then turns around and tells Jeremiah, whereby the kings of Judah come in and by which they go out and in all the gates of Jerusalem. Now, again, as we have read on many chapters, we've read that verse <laughs> because that's just helping us to make note of the fact that these are different times, different occasions where God told Jeremiah to go and do this because of God's uh, seeing the rebellion of the house of Israel and then sending him in with a warning. 
So verse 20 says, And say unto them, Hear ye the word of the Lord, you kings of Judah and all of Judah, and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem that enter in by these gates. Thus says the Lord, Take heed to yourselves, and bear no burden on the Sabbath day, nor bring it in by the gates of Jerusalem. Neither carry uh, forth a, a burden out of your houses on the Sabbath day. Neither do any work, but hallow ye the Sabbath day as I commanded your fathers. But they obeyed not, okay? He says, neither inclined their ear, but made their neck stiff, that they might not hear nor receive instruction. So this tells us how their fathers were, okay? And he says, and it shall come to pass, if you diligently hearken unto me, says the Lord, to bring in no burden through the gates of this city on the Sabbath day, but hallow the Sabbath, Sabbath day to do no work therein, then shall there enter into the gates of this city kings and princes sitting upon the throne of David, riding in chariots on horses, they and their princes, the men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and this sh city shall remain forever. So he will do them good, okay, he's telling them. If they obey his voice not and do, do not do like their fathers did and not hallowing the Sabbath. Okay, um, verse 26, and he says, And they shall come from cities of Judah and from the places of, about Jerusalem and from the land of Benjamin, from the plain and from the mountains, from the south, bringing burnt offerings, sacrifices, meat offerings, incense, and bringing sacrifices of praise unto the house of the Lord if they keep the Sabbath like God tells them. But he says, if you will not hearken to me to hallow the Sabbath day and not to bear a burden, even entering in at the gates of Jerusalem on the Sabbath day, then will I kindle a fire in the gates thereof and it shall devour the palaces of Jerusalem and it shall not be quenched. Now that's in reference to him directing Jeremiah to go toward them uh, to speak to Judah regarding uh again sanctifying the sabbath day and making that a day that is set aside for the house of the lord as he stated right here but and the good things that would happen if they did that and what would happen if they didn't do that he would kindle a fire and the gates thereof and devour the palaces everything would be devoured now because we're reading in the old testament we know that um, they had different laws in the Old Testament than from what we have for the New Testament because Jesus Christ healed on the Sabbath, okay, in the New Testament. And uh, so we, you know, just in taking a look at that and noting that, and let's go to it so we can actually see the difference. John chapter 5 and how uh, when Jesus came to earth, how he changed and rearranged things of the kingdom. For man, and which is a beautiful thing. So John chapter 5, uh, it speaks about it. From the beginning, it was the man who was, uh, okay, where is he at? Certain man which had an infirmity 38 years. He had the infirmity 38 years. And uh, then Jesus said to him, rise, take up thy bed and walk. And then it was the Pharisees and the scribes who had a problem that he had healed this man on the Sabbath. He says, immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked. And on the same day, it was the Sabbath, okay? For the Jews therefore said unto him that uh, that was cured, it is the Sabbath day. It is not lawful for you to carry your bed, okay? So again, we see them having, a, the Jews having a problem. And then he says, he answered them, he that made me whole, the same said unto me, take up thy bed and walk, which was Jesus Christ. Okay, so that was one occasion when Jesus did a healing on the Sabbath and uh, others have problems with it. But there's another chapter nine where he did another healing, where he healed the blind man with the clay. And that's in chapter nine, verse 14. It was the Sabbath day when Jesus made the clay and opened his eyes, okay? And so nevertheless, Jesus changed a lot of the laws that were in the Old Testament because we're looking in an Old Testament book and uh, going through Bible study from an old prophet. But we want to also make the 
make sure that we understand the difference between the Old and the New Testament, and then also the fact that understanding God's heart and his mind toward his people, okay, because some things changed and some things didn't, uh, and we'll get into that on another video as God leads and guides me. All right, so God bless you. God be with you. And this was Bible study with uh, the book of Jeremiah, chapter 17. And I will see you on our next Bible study video as we continue to go forward on the Feed My Sheep Foundation video channel.